Hello, and welcome to St. Martin's All Aid Online Carol Service. It's fantastic that you're joining with us. I guess ordinarily we'd love to be meeting physically for a carol service like this, but we do hope that as we meet online, that still the invitation of Christ and the welcome that he extends to us all is one that you have felt, the one that you feel as we worship together. A little bit later on in the service, Abba is going to be speaking to us about the light of Christ. And you may have noticed that he and myself are wearing these robes, these, this, the white robe with the purple on it. And people often ask us why it is that St. Martin's we do this. Well, actually, in itself, it is also supposed to be an extension of the invitation of Jesus and the welcome that he offers. In biblical times, kings and priests particularly would be people who would wear robes. And the New Testament tells us that anyone who comes to Christ becomes part of his royal priesthood. It's like we have the status in him of being kings and priests. So it's not just leaders, but any Christian, in effect, could be wearing this robe as a symbol of that royal priesthood that we are in Christ. And white, biblically, is a colour of celebration. It's also a colour of purity, the purity that Christ gives to his people when they trust in him. It's, it's nothing that's particularly ornate, innate. In, in a church leader or such. It's just a gift of righteousness that Jesus gives. And of course, anyone who's a Christian could also be wearing that white because it's a gift he gives to all his people. Through church history, church buildings have been open for people to come in and to pray and to be made to, to, to feel welcome. But some people haven't been able to read and so, in order to help those people know what season it is, the church has different colours for each of the seasons of the year. And in Advent time, that colour is purple. So again, wearing the colour of purple is, is a reminder that all are welcome. Jesus extends that welcome to all people. So that's why Abra and I are wearing uh, the clothing that we are today. It's, it's, an, it's an extension of the invitation Jesus makes to us all, and it's also a symbol of his welcome to all of us as we join together. So we do hope that your hearts are lifted to Christ. We do hope that you meet with him, the living God, as we gather together. The service is just going to flow from one part to the next without introduction, uh, with carols, with readings, uh, with a particular feature, a video feature as part of it as well. But as we begin our time, let's pray and commit our time to God. Loving Father, we thank you for Christmas. We thank you for Jesus Christ. And we pray, Lord, that as we meet, Lord, would our hearts be lifted to worship him? Thank you, Lord God, for the invitation you extend to us, the, the offer that you make to us. Thank you for the welcome and the hospitality that you give us. And Lord, we pray, would you come among us, would you dwell among us as we sing, as we hear the passages read, as we listen to Abba, share your word. Lift our hearts to worship you in a way that pleases you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
The reading is from Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The boots of the warrior and the uniforms bloodstained by war will all be burnt. They will be fuel for the fire. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Right, double lock in. One, two. One, two, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Um, hopefully you're all in the waiting room. Um, the same as we practiced, yeah? I'm going to go live because the Prime Minister's coming on and I want to see his announcement. So let's do this, okay? Go on live in three. On the first day of Christmas, COVID gave to me a mask with filters for me to breathe. On the second day of Christmas, COVID gave to me two surgical gloves and a mask with filters for me to breathe. On, On the, the third, third day, day of Christmas, Christmas COVID, COVID gave, gave to, to me. me. Sorry, my body's in the waiting room. Three local lockdowns, two surgical gloves, and a mask with filter to breathe. On the, On the fourth, fourth day, day of Christmas, Christmas COVID, COVID gave, gave to me. me. Eleven pipers are not yet, they're not. On the fourth, fourth day, day of Christmas, Christmas COVID, COVID gave to me. me. Four separate guidelines. Three. And a mask with filters for me to breathe. On, On the, the fifth, fifth day, day of Christmas, Christmas COVID, COVID gave, gave to me. Five claws, Jim. Four Walk a lockdown to breathe. On, On the sixth day, day of Christmas, COVID, COVID gave to me. me. Eleven pipers no. On the sixth, sixth day, day of Christmas, Christmas COVID, COVID gave to me. Can you six? Five claws, gyms. Four separate guidelines. Three local lockdowns. Two surgical gloves. And a mask with filters for me to breathe. On the seventh day, day of Christmas, Christmas COVID, COVID gave to me. me. Seven swans self-isolating. Six geese lost on track and tracing. Five claws, Jim. For me to breathe. On the eighth day of Christmas, COVID came to me. Eleven pipers sanitizing. <sighs> Why not? What's wrong with it? Wake up, ten. Ten lords keep on shielding. Nine ladies social distancing. Eight, eight doors. Guidelines. Breathe. On, On the, the 12th, 12th day of Christmas, Christmas COVID, COVID gave to me. me. 12 drummers zooming, but their zoom legs are not working. 11 pipers sanitizing. 10 lords keep on shielding. My major symptoms displaying. 7 swans lost on track and tracing. 5 separate gloves. And, and a mask with us for me to breathe. breathe. Guys, Merry Christmas. Good evening. No doubt this Christmas there'll be mess with bells on. A get together with your family, but perhaps not physically. Zooming into loved ones' rooms virtually. Crackers pulled, solely rocking Christmas hats digitally, with chestnuts roasting on a laptop screen. Maybe you're shielding your sadness. Maybe you're social distancing from any kind of gladness. Or confess you feel upset by racial collisions and divisions. 
Maybe there'll be an empty seat at the dinner table this Christmas. Amidst the hamper with soap swapped for sanitizer or woolly mitts switched for surgical gloves, may we remember that in the midst of the mess, there's a message of love. Forget 12 days, there's one day that changes the game for all history. Because on the very first day of Christmas, Jesus came for me and you. See, God came down to the front line to put in a perfect shift, to be the perfect gift, to reverse the rift. He faced the ultimate test to trace us back to him with his full flowing grace to sanitize our soul and make us whole. He came to offer us a vaccine that if we want it, we will never be socially distanced from God. Micah 5, verses 2 to 6. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, are only a small village among all the people of Judah, yet a ruler of Israel, whose origins are in the distant past, will come from you on my behalf. The people of Israel will abandon their enemies until the woman in labour gives birth. Then at last his fellow countrymen will return from exile to their own land. And he will stand to lead his flock with the Lord's strength, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. Then his people will live there undisturbed, for he will be highly honored around the world, and he will be the source of peace. When the Assyrians invade our land and break through our defenses, we will appoint seven rulers to watch over us, eight princes to lead us. They will rule Assyria with drawn swords and enter the gates of the land of Nimrod. He will rescue us from the Assyrians when they pour out the borders to invade our land.
chapter 1, beginning at verse 78, 79. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace. Brothers and sisters, this is a special season. In fact, we are on a special day. Tomorrow, we are going to celebrate the birth of Jesus. So today we are reflecting people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. So darkness, that is the reason why you see me in darkness. If this darkness, this physical darkness so hard, you don't see me, you don't see my movement, you don't even much see the candles behind me, why? Because of darkness. And I know in this part of the world that because of civilization, always you have light in the day and in the night. So you don't know what darkness means. I mean, sometimes in winter, when the stars are covered, when the moon is covered with cloud, we don't see anything walking in that darkness. And also in darkness in the forest, the wild beasts are there. So in that darkness, while walking in that darkness, you walk in darkness in night, when you see a light, that will be a great joy. You will celebrate, really, I got a light. I got a delight. If this light in my hand is so important, if it could see a little bit. Now about the whole church, when it's lighted on, when you see the whole church, light by light, and when you see, oh, look, so now people who live in darkness, no more darkness, there is light. So now we reflect walking in the light, walking in the light. In light, you see everything, the physical light. You can see me. You can see the candles behind me. You can see every aspect of the church. You can really walk, you can really touch, you can really read. Why? Because you have light. So I just, the Bible says before the spiritual, there was the physical. Before the heavenly, there was the earthly. That's why I want to start with the darkness, the physical darkness, standing in the dark church. What did you feel? You feel uneasy. You didn't feel happy. You might have said, oh, did he forget to light on the light? So now let's go to that deep meaning of darkness. When the whole world was in darkness. Why? Because of the absence of communication between heaven and earth. Because that bridge was broken. Because God has lost access to us and we have lost access to him. Then, in that circumstance, as Isaiah said, Isaiah chapter 9, as we have heard from the reading, people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. If you go on reading that, child is born to us, a son is given to us. So his authority, his power, his kingdom will be forever and ever. He will be everlasting father. He will be a prince of peace. That is what Christmas means. That is what the birth of Jesus means, light. Light, brothers and sisters. In the Bible, in the beginning, Genesis says, God said, let there be light. And there was light. I mean, when we talk about light, the spiritual light, inner enlightenment is so important. Or also the earthly light. As you know, the sunlight is so important. 
The word light in Greek is photo. You know about photosynthesis, where all these green plants, they absorb the sun and make food. Photosynthesis, photograph, because of light. So in our spiritual journey, when we absorb the light of God and give birth fruit of virtues, get rid of the work of darkness, the vice, and get the virtues of light. As children of light, the Bible says, walk in the light. As children of the light, we walk in the light. So darkness sometimes is not only limited in the physical darkness, absence of life. So probably this year, 2020, because of all the miseries, because of the pandemic, because of wars and uh, difficulties, it might be a year of darkness. So in this darkness, meeting Jesus, coming to the kingdom, knowing him better, having time to reflect on the word of God, Knowing that the limit of mankind, the technology, the scientific discovery doesn't done anything focusing on God that might be a light for you, for me, and for all of us. So light. God is light. St. John says in his first letter, God is light. In him there is no darkness. When we read that part of the scripture, first he said, God came to us. God came to us. Life is revealed to us. We have touched him. We have seen him. We have eaten with him. That light. As John says, Jesus is the light of the world. The true light of the world, Jesus who is born in the manger. He is the light. He is more light than the sunlight. He is more light than the moonlight. He is more light than the star's light. So Jesus is the true light that take away our darkness and give us light. He didn't only give us light. He made us light. How? Matthew chapter 5, he says to us, You are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Who? You believers, you followers, the one who is born. You who celebrate the birth of Jesus. You are the light of the world. How can you, how can I, how can we become light? Are we going to light a candle and burn ourselves? No, the way we speak, the way we enlighten others, the way we lift up others, the way we encourage others, the way we embrace others, the way we address the message of salvation that makes us the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Brothers and sisters, so I would like to leave you with this message. I would like to leave you Am I the light of the world? Because as Isaiah said, people who lived in darkness have seen a great light. So the true light is Jesus. And Jesus wants to make you and me light. In him, there is no darkness. So if he is in the light, I should be in the light. I should be light. I should be showing and seeing and showing. So that's our calling. So this Christmas, focus on the light. And he will give you delight. Day and night, do what is right. Loving and caring Father, we give you glory and honor for making us the light of the world and the salt of the earth. In this time, when we reflect on the birth of Jesus, as we share the scripture, 
People who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Help us to see that light, to become that light, to share that light, to bring the light. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. 
He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Thank you for joining with us as we worship today. Through song, through the readings, through hearing the word of God expounded by Abba. We hope, we pray, that you've met with a living God through our service today. And if there is anything that this service has uh, brought up for you, anything that's particularly struck you from it, then do feel free to get in touch with us to talk some more about that, whether that's by email at lifeatbordering.org, or if you'd like to phone us, uh, we'll happily chat over the phone, which will just call us to the church centre. Of course, we're going to be having our, our services on half past ten on Christmas Day, and also the 27th, Sunday the 27th, half past ten, God willing, um, if we're allowed to, lockdown allowing. And do you, we'd encourage you, if you're living a little further away, maybe you might want to have a look at the Christianity Explored videos that are also on YouTube, to so just help with your thinking, or help exploring a little further. We recognise that Christmas time this year is going to look quite different to what we were expecting or what we were hoping. But we pray that whatever your circumstances and however you're going to be spending Christmas this year, that it is one full of the light and the hope of Jesus Christ. From all of us here at St Martin's, we want to wish you a joy-filled Christmas, one that is centred upon that light and hope that Jesus offers. And so as we finish our time together, let's receive the blessing from God. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all and remain with us always. Amen.